What's up, Pickleheads? We are back this week. Uh, we've been a little bit pressed for time lately, so uh, this will be a, a little bit shorter podcast, but we want to make sure that every week we're bringing you something of value, not just putting a podcast out there to put it out there. So this week we want to talk about ready position, uh, how important it is, what it is, why. And then we'll kind of go through different pickleball pros, why they have a certain ready position or why we think they do so that uh, you can you can better your game a little bit in that way. Um, but but specifically about the ready position. Uh, Os, what's up? Yeah, so like Spencer said, we're going to be talking about different players' ready position, why they do that ready position, why it works for them. Because if you look at the vast array of professional players on the women's and the men's side, they all have a different, slightly different ready position. A lot are similar, but we'll, we'll go more into that in depth later. But first, we want to talk about what is a ready position. And essentially what it is, is exactly what it sounds like. We want to make sure that we are ready for whatever ball comes at us. And that comes from having our arms out in front of us, our paddle out in front of us, ready to either hit a backhand or a forehand. If someone is to hit a a speed up shot or just in general, even if it's a lob, if you don't have a good ready position, you're going to be later getting to the ball than if you had a good ready position. So the way that I like to think about ready position is I like to over-exaggerate it, like Callie Smith, who we might talk about a bit later, um, is I like to act like I have a beach ball in between my arms. And with that beach ball, it makes it so that my elbows are up and out in front of me so that I'm quicker getting to the ball. Whereas if I just had my hand down by my side my left arm doing nothing, my right arm just down by my side. If someone speeds it up at my shoulder, I'm going to have to come up and over to get to that ball or come at a diagonal angle. Whereas if my paddle had already been up and out in front of me, it's just a quick flick of the wrist type of movement. And it's going to be a lot quicker getting it, getting it there. So that's kind of the what and the why of ready position, if that makes sense. Anything to add to that, Spencer, on ready position? Yeah, I think the let's talk a little bit about the purpose for having your arms uh, somewhat out. I, I think for one reason, and this isn't the full purpose, but I feel like any type of a block or any type of a counter that you do uh, in the ready position will, well, any type of block or any type of counter in general, you want to have your hands in front of you. You got a much better opportunity of of uh, making better contact with the ball, uh, finishing through and uh, hitting the ball in a better position in the court. Whereas if you're handcuffed and your your ready position is here against your chest, so let's say we pop that beach ball and then your ready position is is way back here, you're going to get caught and handcuffed because you're farther away from the net. You don't have that opportunity to come out. Um, looks like you got a paddle with you. That'll be a better better way to show. Yeah, go ahead. so any of you that are watching on, on YouTube, if you're not watching on YouTube, go look it up, and I can show you guys kind of what ready position is. So with one arm, some players, the way that you kind of decide between if you have two hands on or one hand is if you have a two-handed backhand or just a one-handed backhand, essentially. There could be other reasons, too, because I, I use both. Um, and since I use both, I typically will just have my left hand close to the paddle, ready to counter with my back, my two-handed backhand or just hit a, a backhand counter with my one-handed backhand. And I'll kind of go into depth on, on why I'll use a two as compared to a one in certain situations uh, because it's super helpful. Hey, before you do that, yeah. sorry, Oz. That, that triggered another thought in my mind. So, for example, Ben Johns, best player in the world, uh, he has somewhat of a two-handed backhand, and I, I know he's working more towards bringing it more in his game. So are you in that? I'm in that situation right now, too, to where I'm trying to implement more of the two-handed backhand, but I'm not there yet. So sometimes my ready position is two hands. Yeah. Sometimes it's just one. Sometimes I counter with just one hand. Sometimes my brain is smart enough to tell me to put the second hand on it. 
I know that yours is more advanced than that. Do you want to talk about real quick, if you know, when you use one hand versus two hands? Yeah. So like with Ben, we'll go into depth with his ready position because he's one of the players that we're going to talk about. But yeah, his ready position, a lot of the time, he doesn't have two hands on. He just has his left hand close here and he's pointing forward. For me, when I'm in my ready position, which is about, about here, I rarely will put this um, other hand on it because I feel like I can get back to this hand quick enough. But the situations in which I'm hitting two hands as compared to one is if someone, let's say I'm playing on the even side, if someone speeds a ball up the middle or at my partner's right shoulder and I'm over there covering, I feel a lot more comfortable and in control if I cover with my two-handed backhand as compared to my one on the reach. So I'm in a defensive position. I'm going to use two hands, put that ball back at them, hopefully as fast as it came, and hopefully in a good position like their right hip or their right shoulder if they're a right-handed player or vice versa if they're a left-handed player. So it really comes down to being in a defensive position. If I'm on the odd side, someone speeds it up down the line, two hands in defense of that speed up. And it's not something that I logically think about. It's just something that happens naturally because I've played so much and I've trained it so much. So I don't think, oh, two hands, one hand. Oh, this one's one hand, this one's two hands. <laughs> so that's why I use two hands, defensive, a defensive position. I'm going to have a lot more control with that left hand on. And something to note is you want your left hand in, in, in charge here. You don't want a hard, firm grip pressure with your right hand and your left hand's barely doing anything. It should be your left hand is taking up about 75% of the shot and your right hand's just on for the ride through it. So as you're practicing your two-hander. But essentially, my ready position's here. If they hit to my forehand, I don't need both hands on the paddle, right? So I'm not going to bring it to my forehand. If they hit to my backhand, I'll bring it to that left hand. And it's not a far way to go. But I feel like it just wastes less energy and it makes more sense for me because a lot of the time I'll just end up hitting it with one hand. So the times when I hit it with one hand as compared to two hands is when I'm in an offensive position and usually in a neutral position in a hand battle or something like that. I'll typically just use one hand because it's more comfortable for me. So it's not a one size fits all. But if I'm reaching out for the ball, I'm going to do a backhand roll with one hand whereas it restricts my reach if I have two hands on there. So it just doesn't make any sense for me. I don't think I can get more power, as, as much power as if I was to just hit it with one hand on an uh, offensive shot that I would be hitting where they maybe hit it a, a bit higher. So yeah, that's what it comes down to, defense and offense. What about for you, Spencer? I know you've been implementing a two-hander into your game lately as well. Yeah, it's similar. I feel like I have more control. One additional point to make there. Like you said, with your right, I mean, you've already made this point, but I just want to clarify. So that right hand, I should have got a, brought a paddle with me today, but that right hand is there mainly to control, correct? Yep. I mean, I always try to tell my, tell my brain, to tell my arm, you're just here to help kind of control this shot. So if I think about like basketball, maybe people can relate to that. I'm right-handed. This is my right hand right here. This is my left hand. If I'm shooting a basketball, my left hand is typically here kind of controlling the ball or some people, they hold it a little farther under controlling the ball and then their right hand is the one that shoots, yeah. right? So we could use that same analogy for pickleball. If I want to hit a two-handed backhand, my left hand is going to be the one that's doing the shooting while my right hand is the one that's just kind of controlling it along the way and it took me it took me a while to figure that out. I just happened to be playing singles with somebody one day a few years ago, and they and they taught me that. I was pulling way too much with my right hand. My right hand was still doing all the work, so it didn't really make sense to have my left hand even there. Whereas now, right hand control, left hand is the majority of the movement, and it seems to be seems to be helpful for me. And as far as when I use it and when I don't, I'm not going to be as much help as Austin because I'm still trying to still trying to figure him out. But as a general rule, if I'm reaching for the ball in any way, it's almost always just one hand. Whether I'm reaching out in front of the net or I got to run to a ball that was gone real wide 
at least in my situation, I'm just doing one hand. Um, but when I have a good opportunity to smack the ball or it's a little bit closer to me, it seems like that's when my brain triggers a little bit more. Hey, let's put two hands on the, on the paddle. Anyway, that's how it is for yeah, me. Yeah, that's interesting. And you guys can see how me and Spencer differ where I'm just offense. I feel like I can, I can get enough power and enough reach with my right hand. But also when I'm reaching for a ball, that's really far away. I'll do one hand just like Spencer. But where we differ is I feel like I can get way more power by having one hand because that's what I'm comfortable with. But you have to figure it out for yourself ultimately and figure out what works for you and your specific uh, skills and body type and stuff like that. But I love his basketball analogy because if you go up for a right, if you're righty and you go up for a right-handed layup, your right hand is doing most of the work. This one's just the guide, right? It's the same if you go up for a lefty layup and you're right-handed because a lot of basketball players, once they get really good, yeah. they go up for a lefty layup. That left hand's now in charge. The right hand is just the guide. So it's the same with the two-handed backhand. Let that left arm take control. And the best drill or practice that you can do to improve your two-handed backhand, I know we're talking about ready position, but to improve that two-handed backhand is to get a one-handed forehand on your opposite side that you normally use. So it'll feel really uncomfortable at first, but you'll get more and more used to it where it will become more natural. And obviously I still need to work on my one-handed lefty shot, my one-handed lefty forehand. But what I'll do is I'll choke up on the paddle like where I would hold normally. I put this finger up as a guide as I hit. And I'll hit my forehands like that, choked up on the paddle. Out of the air, forehand volleys, right? Roll volleys. And I'll just keep hitting those over and over and over again. Typically, if you warm up like that too, the rest of your day playing pickleball goes so much better as well because you're allowing that left arm to really get a good warm up so that it actually takes over with the muscle memory. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, because I, I, I'm going to try that now. I, to be honest, I've never practiced hitting with just one hand, but I think any time in drilling that would be. A really good benefit. So I'm well, going to try. We were talking the other day, and you said you would practice throwing a football with your left hand. And he has yeah. a pretty natural football throw too. Like it looks like he could be left-handed. It just can't go quite as far. But if he had never practiced it, it would look like a push, right? It wouldn't look very good. So it just comes down to practicing it. Novak Djokovic in the tennis world. For those of you that watch tennis, that's a bad word with Spencer around, but. <laughs> Novak's, no, yeah, I like him. Novak's a beast. He, uh, he, if you saw him hit a lefty forehand, it's so sexy. He look, it looks like that's his dominant hand, and it's just because he's practiced that so much, just hitting it with the lefty forehand. Real quick, two points. Uh, I want to talk about James Ignatowicz first, just because this really relates with a two-hander. Um, but before I do that, just a quick story. Austin was visiting in Vegas the other day. Um, I think we I think we played pickle in the morning. Yeah, we drilled all morning for quite a while. We were video videoing some stuff for his new app, and uh, I'm all pickleball. I'm never watching tennis anymore. <laughs> and uh, anyways, we go over to my mom's house. Hey, he's staying at my mom's place, and he's there watching. Uh, watching Wimbledon it really hurt my heart <laughs> so reach out to Austin on uh in the comments section on on YouTube or or on Instagram and tell him he's not allowed to watch or play tennis <laughs> <laughs> and shout out to tennis sucks podcast because I agree yeah pickleball only forgive me for I have seen <laughs> okay <laughs> real quick so James Ignatowicz another another pro who's 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 very good um he has so much power on his two-handed backhand and i feel like he, with his ready position i have noticed his ready position is just in one hand but i he's trained his brain so well that any time that ball is somewhat up over here on on his left side his left hand is on that ball and that ball is getting attacked um so you know, technically there are others that play with two hands, especially females on the pro scene who, who their ready position is two handed. I know you're going to talk about that, but it seems like with his, he's, he's trained his brain to where when it does come over there, he 
pops it right over. So similar, similar to yours, I would say. Would you yeah, say that? Similar to mine, but I'm not gonna. I mean, if someone speeds it up, right, and it's coming fast at me, I'm gonna put two hands on. He's always two hands. But if there's like a nice juicy one, I mean, he's not always two hands. He does hit one handers too. So we're probably really similar, but he hits the two handed backhand way more than I do. Because on an offense yeah. shot where he's reaching out, he hits a one hander and it's got some power and pop to it too. But I'd say he's majority two hands and it's what works for him. It wouldn't work for me. Maybe if I trained it right, but what I, what I do is what I like yeah. and what works for me. But like you were saying, a lot of the girls on tour, Annalie Waters, um, Callie Smith, they all have their ready position with two hands on the paddle. And it's because Anna Lee hits every single shot, every single backhand with two hands. I don't think I've seen her hit with one hand that I can remember. I'm sure she does every once in a while, but majority of the time she's got two hands on there as she's hitting her shots. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I would say just like Ben Johns, whenever he's in a defensive position, he just brings that paddle to his left hand and then he counters with it. So it just kind of depends on the player and what they what they like. But since Ben hits both one-handed and two-handed, he doesn't have both hands on the paddle as his ready position. And I think it can be an advantage. I mean, if you think about when he's uh, – still, I'll consider this ready position. Let's just say you're ready off of off of the kitchen. I mean, is there a term for being ready when you're deep in the court? I just know that Ben – is able to, if he feels like he's getting uh, a really hard ball, you know, someone hits an overhead at him. I've noticed that some of his resets from deeper in the court, he will put two hands on it. And I think that gives him more control there. Um, and then other times, I don't know, maybe he's able to tell on his end that it's not as hard a ball coming at him. Sometimes it's one hand where he resets from there. So it can be an advantage because the opponent is not sure, like, are they going to put two hands on it? Or are they not? And then another advantage someone has, or disadvantage, depending on what you do with, with putting two hands on the paddle, uh, Andre Deescu, um, we didn't talk about this before, but it, excellent player, of course, not dogging on his game at all. But typically when he's at the kitchen, if he puts two hands on the paddle, he's attacking. You know, he's not going to dink. And so the other pros are able to read that. He's probably going to attack down the line or somewhere else, but typically it's down the line too as soon as he puts two hands on it. So it'd be a good idea to kind of mask that a little bit better. And, and that's what I'm working on right now. Not every time I put two hands on the ball, I'm going to attack or I'm going to drive. But maybe I dink sometimes so that they don't know if it's if an attack is coming or not. Uh, sorry, one more point. This may seem really simple, but this is how I learned ready position. Um, and I actually learned it from tennis, but it, it takes, it's a lot faster, especially if you get a ball coming at you. If you're started here, if you've started here and you get attacked and the ball comes to your body, it takes a millisecond to get to where you need to get to. Whereas if you're hanging your paddle way down you know, below your waist and not ready, it takes longer to bring it all the way up to you. But I know there's another pro that we're going to talk about that seems to hold it way down there. Uh, but he's excellent and he's figured it out for him. It just doesn't work for me because it takes me too long to bring the paddle all the way up here. Anyway. Yeah, I don't get it. Who he's talking about is J.W. Johnson, right? Yeah. J.W. Johnson, everybody says he has the fastest hands too. If you talk to other pros... Everybody says, like, yeah, JW's hands are straight fire. And I was watching this video by Pickleball Pirates. They have a good YouTube channel. It's this guy. He's 4.0 or 4.5. And he just kind of does, like, match reviews. And um, he was wondering the same question, like, why is JW's hand so fast? Because he has one hand on the paddle. He'll sometimes use two. But he has one hand on the paddle and it's below his waist, almost like probably at quad level is where he's holding it, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Like really low and relaxed. Yeah. And his paddle's at a perfect, it's perfectly flat, straight up and down. I guess 
if you're not watching, the the edge guard is facing up, straight up and down. And then somehow he has the fastest hands ever. But the Pickleball Pirates guy was talking about it, and he said, if you think about fighters, they conserve their energy by having their both their fists down low, like at waist level. And then they bring them up, mm. and supposedly they can bring them up quicker than if they were already up here and then having to move to here. I don't really understand it, but he says it's because they were relaxed. So that was his uh, idea of why JW's hands are still so fast when he holds his paddle way down low, like ape-like. If you think about like super long arms, that's kind of what it looks like. But then he just has these crazy fast hands. Um, What do you think is the reason, Spencer? Because that's really the only answer that I've seen is that you're relaxed and you're somehow quicker like a fighter by having your hands down there. But doesn't quite make sense. That make I mean, I don't know. I mean, that makes sense to me. I'm thinking about uh, if if he is relaxed too. I mean, I guess he's giving his arms a break. I, at the same time, I don't ever feel like, oh, this paddle's so yeah. heavy. You know, uh, my arms hurting from holding right. this paddle because it is pretty light. Um, but yeah, that that makes sense to me. Uh, I don't know enough about about fighting. I feel like I saw that video too, but it's been a while oh, since okay. I've seen it. Um, so, I mean, I would make the point that even though JW does have the fastest hands, I would not suggest you hold your paddle down there yeah. as well. Uh, he knows what he's doing. Uh, he's gotten to a point where he does have, I, I, I would say, one of the fastest hands. Between him, Riley Newman, and Ben, I would give Ben the edge. But definitely in the top three uh, and maybe top two. But uh, if you're just starting out or even if you're midway through your game, you know, you're at a level, you're at the 4-0 level or whatever, I would definitely suggest trying to have a ready position that's up here. Now, what do you think, Oss, about the way I learned ready position is to have my paddle instead of at 12 o'clock when it's out here in front of me, um, to be slightly more like 10 o'clock um, in the backhand position because your backhand, you're able to reach a lot farther across your body than you can with your forehand. Your forehand stops in the middle. I mean, you're not really getting anything farther this way. Uh, for those of you that aren't watching, I suggest you watch, but I'll try <laughs> to explain it. If I have a forehand out in front of me, I can only go, I'm right-handed, I can only go and stretch all the way out to my right-hand side. I can't bring my forehand much past this point without, I don't know, breaking my arm. And it'd be very weird and hard to get it over the net if I was to bring it farther over here. Um, Whereas with the backhand, you have so much more reach and accurate reach. You know, so you want to block here and then and then reach all the way over. So anyway, long story short, the way I was taught is not to be at 12 o'clock, but to be more backhand dominant at maybe 10 o'clock so that you're more ready for the backhand to jump on whatever ball it is. But is that what you were taught yeah. or what do you do now? Off? Majority of shots that you're going to hit is going to be a backhand unless you were taught, like some players coming in were taught to hold their paddle with the face of the paddle facing straight up and down, kind of like a Riley Newman grip, but they use a forehand for every shot, which is very low level, which you don't want to do, but now you're seeing some pros implement it into their game because they're quicker getting to it with their forehand, which is kind of interesting. Uh, Since I have always, from playing tennis and from playing so much pickleball, since I've always hit so many backhands, I feel very comfortable hitting backhands. I feel like I can get enough power hitting backhands. So it makes probably more sense for me to just keep mm-hmm. it backhand. But like Spencer's saying, that's exactly how I was taught. If you look at Ben, JW as well, um, Hayden Patrickwin, they have their paddle. Wherever the ball is in the court, it'll be slightly veered towards a backhand, and it's not pointing directly at the ball like Spencer was saying, it's slightly veered towards a backhand because majority of counters, if they speed it up, are going to be on that backhand side. If it's not, this movement from going from ready position slightly on the backhand side to your forehand is extremely quick. 
And that's what I've noticed lately. Even if people hit me at the right hip, I feel extremely quick getting to that position as compared to inverting my wrist. So maybe something to pay attention to, Spencer. I don't know if you already know, but next time you play, see what's faster for you. Because like this even, going from ready position slightly to backhand to full backhand, slightly hurts trying to do it fast. Whereas with the forehand, yeah. I guarantee you I'm way faster. And if you watch Ben, he's a lot faster. He'll be full backhand expecting the ball, and he can get to his forehand quick enough. So you kind of want to be on that backhand side because it's a little bit weaker moving your hand inverted as compared to the other way, exverted, whatever right. it is. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get me one of those embarrassing workout things that my grandma used to use for my forearms. You know, have you, <laughs> yeah. you know those things? The that clampers? You, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we need some of those. I mean, I guess that that wouldn't be as embarrassing as the the shaker weight or whatever that thing was. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hopefully that's not still around. I I uh, but yeah. I wonder I I have noticed lately if I put my wrist in a in a bad position um and I've done some research on this, I think I need to get a little bit more f- forearm strength but also wrist strength. Um, and I think JW Johnson is one of those that has a ton of yeah, wrist I think strength you're right. and he's using his wrist a lot, but he's developed his game from zero wrist to a lot of wrist. I don't suggest that anybody go out there and this is your second time playing pickleball and moving your wrist all yeah, over the place, yourself. but you can eventually get to that place. Yeah, I totally, that's exactly what I was going to say is just that about, I wasn't going to say it specifically about J-Dub, but all these pros just must have massive wrist strength and forearm strength yeah which is what i need to work on because that backhand side's so weak but that's why i got my left hand for counters and that's why it works so well for me is because yeah the the left hand i feel like i have so much control and so much power as well and i can get to the ball a lot quicker by just putting it into my left hand someone else's ready position that i want to talk about was hayden patrickwin what they do is they they point the tip of their paddle towards the opponent so he does that ben does that jw does that i mean a lot of these guys do it and i was kind of debating why they do that but they'll be slightly towards the backhand like spencer was saying why would you say spencer i know i'm putting you on the spot but do you have any ideas of why (laughs) they would point it as compared to point it at their opponent as compared to point it up hell if i know but I'm going to have, I'll, I'll guess at okay. it. Okay. And my guess would be, my guess would be, well, I guess there's two things. <laughs> um, this is unrelated, but another point, when you, when you do finish your stroke, when you're coming from a ready position, this may seem basic, but try to point your paddle tip in the direction that you want the ball to go. Finish there. But my guess is, when they have it straight out like this, that somehow they're able to focus more on the ball, but I have no freaking clue. And, uh, hopefully you can give us some insight. There's a lot of things they do where I'm like, I wouldn't do it that (laughs) way, but they seem to have a lot of success. I think Hayden Patrick Quinn, he's really impressed me lately, but I think he has some wicked fast hands and he does the same thing where he does two hands and one hand, just depending on the ball that he's getting defense or offense. But the reason, and this is what I think, I don't know this for a fact, but this is why I do it, is you point the tip towards your, if you point the tip upwards towards the sky on a slight angle, that encourages you to lock your wrist up. And so with that wrist being Mm. locked up, that ball comes at you. How are you going to hit topspin with your wrist locked up? It's going to be slice that you're hitting back or a punch that you're hitting back. Whereas if you point it outwards, now they speed it up at you. It inspires top spin coming back. So pointing it at your opponents, you're going to get top spin on both sides. If it's pointed up, you're going to get slice counters. This would make way more sense if you were hitting slice, but pickleball is a top spin oriented game, especially with your volleys. You have swinging volleys. You have uh, top spin counters. It makes a lot more sense to point that tip out. And what I've noticed is as I've been doing that after watching the pros, I mean, this is within the last month and a half that I've been figuring this out because I was like, okay, I need to try this ready position so that I'm ready for the two-handed back 
backhand counter where my tip is straight up and down. I think I'll be a lot quicker. I just felt no quicker. And then I was like, look at Hayden Patrick when he's literally just pointing it at his opponents. And if you look at him in hand battles, the dude's wicked, I think. And he, <laughs> he yeah. just keeps getting quicker and quicker. But it's because of that topspin, in my opinion. I don't know 100% for sure, but it's like based off of the angle of the paddle, you can't physically hit topspin on the ball here with your paddle facing up unless you're, I mean, you're just, you're not loose enough. You're not loose like how you'd be if you were pointing towards right. your opponent and you don't have as, no, as much reach because in order to get your paddle down where you want it to go, you have to invert your wrist. Whereas here, out, outvert your wrist, whatever the word is. Whereas here, you can get there and hit that top spin on top. But I do like Spencer's idea as well that it's like you can track the ball better because your paddle's not in front of your face, which is also helpful. Yeah, but I'm probably completely wrong. So just everybody <laughs> disregard that. <laughs> but no, I mean, like Abraham Lincoln said, he who doth hit the ball down wins the point. <laughs> and uh, Good man. <laughs> that's pickleball, Abe Lincoln. <laughs> Uh, he was probably playing pickle in the White House and nobody knew about it. He probably invented, he invented it. it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but that makes total sense for me. I think that's killer. Uh, I mean, I believe you. I think that works because if you're if you're able to put topspin on the ball, you're the one hitting the ball down. And typically, it's not the fastest ball that wins the point at the net. You know that wins the hands battle. It's typically whoever can get the ball down the yeah. best wins that point. Yeah, it's got to have a little speed on it, but down is is the way to go. Once you pop that thing up, like you said, if you're up here, then then you're in trouble, especially at at higher Look levels. At Colin Johns, he has the best counter. His is straight out towards his opponent as he hits. It's because he's hitting topspin. If you hit slice, slice doesn't go down. Slice floats at your opponent sometimes slice even goes up yeah. so yeah hitting topspin if you guys want to try it for yourselves that's what i invite you guys to do go try it for yourselves just pointing at your opponent with it slightly towards the backhand side you'll see your hands are a lot quicker and that's what i've realized so that's what i'm sticking with hand, my left hand near the the paddle because i'm not always going to hit with two hands and then pointing towards my opponent any other pros that you want to analyze spencer I uh, just want to make another point. Um, this may seem basic, but you're talking mainly continental or an eastern yeah. grip um, in all of these ready positions. Uh, I don't suggest anyone have a western or semi-western grip, but like Austin said, there are some great pros that do. They're few and far between, but with everything that we've explained today, you want to have the handshake or the continental grip or slightly more eastern, which... I've migrated a lot more Eastern, and I, I feel like that's been better. I haven't been switching my grip at all during matches, and I think it's I think it's been good. Maybe there are certain times when I should switch between Continental and Eastern, but I'm still trying to trying to figure that out. But anyway, with what we'd ex what, with what we've explained today, it it would make sense to also teach you, hey, you need to do an Eastern or, or a continental yeah, grip. And that's an Eastern, uh, in your ready position. That's an Eastern forehand. Cause sometimes we'll have people comment on the video. Are you talking Eastern backhand or Eastern oh. forehand? I'll show them really quick what the difference is. Yeah. 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 So Eastern forehand, this flat part of the paddle, you're going to come straight down with mm. this, with your index knuckle. You're going to come all the way down with the index knuckle on that flat part. And then you're going to grab around your paddle. That's an Eastern forehand. But the, the most important thing to note is if I were to draw a line on my palm from index finger to my palm pad here, that is the line that it should follow on Eastern from the face of the paddle. So it's coming from there down through here as if there was a line. That's true Eastern because you can have your index finger here and you can be holding your paddle like this, which is... <laughs> which is some muffed up grip that you don't want to have and you'll have no control. You won't be able to do anything. You'll probably break your wrist, but you're going to have a ton of control if you can put it down like that. That's Eastern forehand. Let's go over continental really quick because it's so close. This next bevel over is where you want to put your knuckle for continental. There's like a middle bevel. So I move it slightly over 
I am now in Continental. Okay. And remember, I'm not, I'm not um, keeping my, taking my palm pad off the paddle. I just make it so that it finds this corner of my palm, and I know I'm in the right spot. That's Continental. And then an Eastern backhand. I'm coming down the uh, frame of the paddle, and I'm going to put my index knuckle on this bevel here, this flat one. And that is an Eastern backhand. And then remember, it's coming straight down that palm pad as if I were to draw a line down my palm. Eastern backhand. I've seen players use this a lot. This grip will favor your backhand a ton, but try hitting a forehand with it and you'll be unsuccessful. So I don't <laughs> recommend changing your grip to this. A lot of players will. One of the great players that I know actually changes his grip if he gets a high one. That's when I'd suggest doing it because you're going to be able to get a lot more power and spin by having that eastern backhand. As for me, I hold straight up eastern forehand for every single shot that I hit, whether it's a ground stroke, a drive, a lob, or a drop. So you said you're, you used to hold just continental and then you started switching between both and now you're just using eastern forehand? Yeah. Sweet. Mainly just eastern right now. That's what I like. Uh, another, another quick point I want to make before we end is, and this is a really important point, it might seem simple again, but for beginners and for middle of the way and even for advanced players, before you play uh, a rec game, ask your partner if they will pay attention to you slightly throughout the match and let you know whether or not you are in ready position. Because sometimes we tell ourselves before we get on the court to be in ready position when we get to the, to the net. And then actually in play, we don't, we don't even realize that our hands are hanging down there and we're not ready um, because we're in the moment and we're focused on so many different things. Oh, there's the ball over there. I got to make sure that I get it back and that I don't miss. Oh, yeah, I forgot to be in ready position, so I wasn't ready for that ball. But if you ask your partner beforehand, they can kind of keep an eye on you and just say, hey, let me know after if I'm or between points if my arms aren't up here and out so that I'm so that I'm ready for the ball. Anyway, just a suggestion. I like that. One quick thing, a lot of players will start out with Continental. That's how I started out. If you're hitting Continental, your backhand's going to be fantastic. Your forehand's going to suffer a little bit because it's really hard to hold Continental and still get over the ball. So start with Continental if you're just starting, and then try to find in between Continental and Eastern, there's this bevel and this bevel coming right on this line here. Start moving it slightly over, play a whole session with that until you get to Eastern, because Eastern is going to favor your backhand, and then as you invert your wrist, I mean favor your forehand, and then as you invert your wrist, it'll favor your backhand too. And that's why I use it for all my shots, because it makes an even playing field for both of the, both of the sides that I hit the ball on. That's, Great that's all I have for today, Spence. Do you have anything else? I do not, but I hope this is valuable for everybody. Get out there and try it. Uh, Ready position does make a big difference, and you'll see your speed improve, uh, especially your hand speed at the net. But, hey, we appreciate everybody listening this week. Got another awesome podcast coming next week. Share this with your friends. Follow us on Instagram, and we will see you next week. Later, Pickleheads. Later.